All right, uh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, we'll do wait. We'll keep that the same. Yeah, I always like when there's uh, default names for the characters. I'm absolutely terrible at thinking names. Uh, if there's not a default name, I will spend half an hour trying to pick something that's uh, not going to be stupid. Uh, and you know, which fits the theme and everything. Alright, so I have, uh, I've played this a little bit, a couple times, but I've never actually beat it. Uh, one that I, I do like it, uh, but I've just, uh, you know, just bad luck, I've never managed to actually finish it. Uh, it's always been like, uh, you know, I get really into it, I play it for a little while, and then another game comes out that I really want to play, and, uh, you know, I end up, I play that, I'm like, okay, I'll get back to Chrono Trigger eventually, and then, uh, you know, because of the whole time jumping thing, it's, if you just pick up a save file midway through, it's kind of hard to tell where you are, because you go back and forth between the different times so many times. That it's just like, okay, I, I don't know where to go, and uh, it's even a bother to, like, find where you are in a guide. Like, you know, if you're in the 2000 AD or whatever, it's like, okay, you go back there, like, ten times, so... Uh, you know, how do you find where you are in a guide to know where to go next, if, you know, just to get your bearings again? So yeah, then I end up, I give up, and then, you know, a couple years later, I decide, oh, I'm, I'm going to beat Chrono Trigger, and, you know, I go through, and then, uh, you know, maybe I die, and I lose, uh, you know, an, an hour, or, you know, two hours of progress, or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, I don't feel like playing anymore. Uh... But I'm hoping this time I can actually, uh, you know, get through it. This, you know, the recording will give me incentive to do that. So I'm not, like, super familiar with the game. Uh, like I said, I've played it a little bit a couple times over, you know, many years, so... Uh, not exactly sure. I kind of want to just get through this uh, opening part and kind of get into the game, but...
I don't know if there's like a... You have to get so many silver points for... What? Uh... A heal? Very good. Yeah, so part of the reason why I wanted to do this was just, uh, you know, it's the end of the year, and uh, last year I played through a Super Mario RPG kind of around the same time, and uh, I thought this was kind of a... a you know, similar thing. Uh, I think it's... Uh, same developers, uh, I think, uh, you know, around the same time, about the same, same length of game, similar style, uh, also I have, you know, similar history with it, Super Mario RPG was another game that I played partway through several times, but never actually beaten, so, uh, yeah, this should be good, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk a bit about the games I've played this year. You know, uh, go through them all. Um, I haven't done too many videos lately. Uh, I've just been kind of busy with other stuff. And, uh, Yeah, I do have a couple of videos that are kind of partway done, but uh, I, don't, I just haven't gotten around to finishing them. Uh, I tend to get kind of really into doing something, uh, and then I don't really do anything else. Uh, oh, did he win? Uh, yeah, and so I just, I haven't been doing much YouTube yet, or lately. Oh, good. Alright, I, yeah, I guess maybe it's just on a timer or something. Uh, yeah, although I know, uh, I'm pretty sure, like, these Let's Plays, they don't get really that many views. Uh, the ones that actually, the videos that do get the... Wait, what's happening here? Okay, I gotta just talk to her. Okay. Uh, the videos that seem to get the most views are the ones about the, uh, typically the Japan exclusive, like RPGs and stuff, like the Pirate 7 and the uh, Monyu video. Uh, they seem to get by far the most views. They get like 10 times what everything else does. But, uh, I don't know, these are fun to make anyways, even if no one watches them.
This could have ended up like uh, that Simpsons episode where uh, well, the Halloween of Horrors where Bart gets like crossed with a fly or whatever. Why is Luca's dad hitting it with a hammer? That doesn't seem like that should be a, like, usual part of operating the device. Well, at least wherever she went, she looked like she was whole. You didn't just get like turned inside out or anything. Hoping the game actually kind of starts, in, you know, when I'm just playing, going through battles, uh, you know, just actually playing the game and not sitting here watching cutscenes and stuff. Because, uh, yeah, I because I don't know the game that well, you know, I can't really just be talking the whole time during the cutscenes because otherwise I I'm gonna miss what's going on and. Uh, you know, I'll end up lost or whatever, so I gotta kind of pay attention a bit during those. It looks like we're kind of, hopefully, in, uh, if we got a bit of gameplay here. I guess. West. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess I might as well start talking about the games I played. Uh, Got a new skill. Um, okay, the the chests look empty when they're closed. Like that that looks like it's had its lid removed. Right. Uh, okay, he's already got an accessory. Oh. Um, so I guess for games I played, uh, I guess I do have my 
top and bottom ten. Uh, I don't know, every year I just keep a list of all the games I played and then keep like a running uh, top ten and bottom ten games. Uh, I'll do that kind of last. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe first would be better. Uh, I guess for, I don't know, the 10th best game I played was uh, Metroid, the NES. Um, I think I... I did start to talk about that. I, uh, I had started a video of uh, the Link to the Past and Super Metroid Randomizer, where I talked about all the Metroid and Zelda games. And, uh, but I never ended up finishing that. I kind of abandoned it because the the seed I got in it was just absolutely horrible. Uh, I don't know, I'll talk about it more later when I actually talk about that, but uh, yeah, the seed was absolutely horrible and it was just hours and hours of me going around in circles, uh, you know, not really accomplishing anything. I really like that, that you can move around when text blocks are active. I think that's like, I don't know, I can't believe that that's not common now, like that should just be the way you do it. Uh, like that's one of the things I actually really like about Dark Souls that nobody talks about is, you know, you can just talk to someone and then just walk away, and, you know, it's like, okay, gameplay comes first. Uh, so anyways, yeah, Metroid. Um, yeah, I actually really liked it. Uh, right, that's maybe New Game Plus thing or something. Uh... Yeah, so Metroid, um, it was pretty, it was really good, um, obviously I do like the other, like, pretty much all the other Metroids better, but, uh, it was still, uh, good. Uh, the only problems I had with it were the, uh, the combat is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of grindy, you have to, you take a lot of hits, and then you have to sit there, like, grinding for health a lot. Uh, especially because you don't like recover health at like the save stations or anything. The only way you can recover the health, recover your health, is by grinding at like the enemy recharge or re enemy spawn places, uh, which that's a huge bother. Uh, aside from that, I didn't really have many problems with it. Um, I guess a castle. Uh, the, you know, people talk about, like, how it's, you know, super cryptic and, you know, how would you ever beat it with a guide, but I just drew a map and, uh, you know, kept notes and stuff, and if you do that, it's pretty easy to find your way around, like, you... Uh, you know, you, you, uh, you just, uh, you know, keep track of where you've been and where you have to go when you get some power up, uh, if you draw a map then you'll be able to see, like, okay, there's, uh, there should be a room, like, to the north of me that I can't get to, and so then you can, you know, uh, go around the edge of where that room should be and like search the walls there and he'll eventually find like okay here's a uh a hidden you know a false wall or whatever that you can get through to get into there and then you find some power up in there uh it really wasn't that cryptic if you just pay attention and keep a map it's not really that bad
Uh, yeah, so the only thing I'd say, you know, if you're going to play it, just play it on an emulator and then you can use save states to get rid of the health grinding. Like, you know, if you, uh, you know, you save when you're at full health and then if you get killed instead of starting back again at 30 health, you, uh, you just reload your save or whatever. Uh, I think, you know, if they, you know, a remake of it or whatever would only really have to fix that. Just make it so that you, uh, you respawn with full health or whatever. Uh, next would be my bottom 10, or I guess 10th, 10th worst game. Yeah, I don't know. Top 10 and top and bottom 10 is maybe a bit bit much. I think those places do like top three or top five or whatever, but oh well. Uh, yeah, because I'm... I don't know. Uh, I didn't end up playing that many bad games. Uh, and, you know, I'm not like a reviewer who has to review, uh, you know, every game that comes out or whatever, so if the game looks like it's not going to be great, I just don't play it. Uh, so my bottom 10 games aren't necessarily even bad games. A lot of times they're just maybe disappointing or, you know, I thought they would be good or whatever. And they turned out not to be so good, you know, or just not for me. Uh, so for bottom 10, it would be uh, Disgaea 6. Uh, this is one I imported the Japanese version. Uh, I think it wasn't out yet here at the time when I imported it, but I didn't end up getting around to playing it until it was uh, available in the West. Uh, I don't recall if you can play the Japanese uh, language version uh, on the Western release. Uh, I know it's fairly common with like anime style games that the Western release doesn't have, uh, you know, Japanese language option. Uh, like, voice is fairly common, but text is... It's actually fairly common that you can't get uh, Japanese text in the anime style games. Uh, just because I think they want to stop back importing. They don't... Uh, you know, they'll sell... Uh, you'll, uh, you know, they'll sell, like, uh, an anime style RPG, whatever, to, like... Uh, the, you know, Japanese otaku for, like, $90 or whatever, because they'll pay that. Uh, and then they sell it in the West for, like, $60. Uh, but if they can just import the Western version, then they won't pay the $90, so they remove the Japanese text. At least that's one reason I've heard for why they do that. Uh, the other is just... Well, sometimes they remove the voices, and that's just, you know, famous voice actors, uh... They don't have the license to use them outside of Japan or whatever. Uh, but yeah, Disgaea. Um, Disgaea is one of those series where I've played a couple um, games in the series, and I've every single time I've kind of regretted it. I've been like, okay, Disgaea is going to be fun, I'm going to enjoy this. And I get it, and then after a couple hours I'm like, right, I remember I don't like this guy. Uh, yeah, and that, that ended up happening again. Uh, I got a couple hours in, and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I just, uh, it's not for me. Uh, the main problem with this guy is just, it's too, I guess, open and grindy or something? Like, there's just too much side stuff you can do. Uh, that I end up getting... I get distracted way too easy, and I spend hours and hours and hours going through side content and, you know, maxing out all my characters' classes and stuff, and then I just get sick of it. And, uh, you know, all the main stuff ends up being a cakewalk because I'm super overpowered. And that's exactly what happened in Disgaea. I I did a whole bunch of side stuff, all the side missions. I did a bunch of the item world stuff. 
and uh, got super overpowered and then just was like, you know, sleepwalking through all the uh, main story stuff. Yeah, and I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just kind of got sick of it and uh, ended up stopping halfway through. I had, you know, the story missions were so easy. I had considered, okay, I'll just blast through them all and just beat it. But, uh, I don't know. Lately, I've kind of, I don't know. I don't feel the need to beat, force myself to beat games anymore. It used to be like, okay, I, I gotta finish the game 100%, or not 100%, but I gotta get to the end, and then it'll be beaten, and I can move on, but I don't I kind of realized that was more like a chore than anything. Uh, so, I don't know, I, I've kind of lost that feeling where, you know, I feel like I have to. Instead, it's just, okay, I, I'm not getting like 100% enjoyment out of this, so I'll just play something else. And I'm fine with just saying, okay, whatever, I beat it 20%, that's enough. I don't need to force myself to do the rest. Uh, so I just kind of stopped. Um, yeah, so it was that, it was getting sick of it, and also... I found it was just... I don't know, it was too open. Where it's like, you know, any character can learn any ability or whatever, and equip any item, and... Uh, you know, it just felt like there was no consequences or strategy or anything. You could just max out everybody and, uh... I don't know, it didn't seem like it was really worth my time playing it, uh... One... I don't know, like, one thing I noticed that was, uh... Or that I saw that was really, I don't know, thought-provoking, uh... Matthew Matosis, in one of his, like, I don't know, his last video or whatever, uh meta micro videos he talks about how um oh crap what was it this uh, yeah he mentions about like cookie clicker games and uh you know the clicker games where you just you sit there and you click a button and the number goes up and that feels enjoyable and it's like okay um you know, there's obviously a very, you know, there's a very obvious, like, addictive lever in our brains where if you just make numbers go up, we'll just sit there and we'll push a button all day to make numbers go up. And I've kind of noticed that before, but, you know, it gets you kind of thinking, okay, are you actually enjoying this game or whatever? Or are you just being hooked and watching the numbers go up? And I think that's... I don't know, that's something I don't think a lot of people really kind of pay attention to. Uh, you know, I think a lot of games and a lot of entire genres are basically just, you know, they're glorified clicker games. And, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, Disgaea was kind of heading towards that where you know, there's so many, like, the item world and all that, where you can just, you know, you can boost all your stats on all your characters and eventually get everyone knowing every ability and level up the abilities. And there's just so many numbers you can watch go up that, uh... Yeah, it kind of felt like, okay, what's the actual, like, fun in this? Where's the actual strategy? Or am I just, you know, am I just going through the item world over and over again because I want to see the items get stronger. Uh, and so yeah, I ended up, uh, I, you know, I ended up quitting it part way through. Um, which was kind of disappointing because I do, I like, I love the style of Disgaea. Like that art style is one of my favorite. Uh, the humor is great too. Uh, I love just the, you know, uh, completely, I don't know, uh, irreverent or whatever uh, attitude. I love that you're like a bad guy who's just going around and you know you're just doing it because you want to be strong and you're not really trying to save the world it's just you want to beat the bad guy because you want to be stronger than him. 
even if you're like a you know a worse bad guy yourself or whatever. Uh, and I did like you know I like all the characters, uh, the designs. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know I just couldn't. Uh, the actual gameplay wasn't I don't know terribly interesting for me. Right. That's, I don't know, I probably, I don't know if I've played a game of time travel in it uh, before or here, but uh, that's one thing that, uh, I don't know, always annoys me with time travel stuff is uh, people are completely fine overlooking all sorts of plot holes and, you know, uh, science errors or whatever in most games. Uh, like, nobody cares about, you know, using magic to teleport or fight monsters or whatever, or demons or alternate dimensions or whatever. It's just like, oh, yeah, whatever, it's fantasy. But uh, as soon as time travel comes up, people get really weird about being, like, scientifically accurate and proving that, you know, they know that, uh, oh, well, actually, uh, you know, if the bad guys do kill uh, the queen's descendant, then she would disappear, but if she disappeared, then she wouldn't be able to go back, and, you know, it would create a paradox, so none of this can actually happen, and, yeah, I'm so smart for recognizing that. But, you know, they do this with every single time thing. Everybody will do, like, you know, a, a review or a critique or whatever, where they're, they're totally fine with all the other stuff, but as soon as time travel comes up, it's like, oh, we... Now we gotta show how scientifically inaccurate that is. And, uh, I don't know, I just... I can't stand that. It's like, whatever, it's, uh... You know, for a dramatic effect, she's gonna disappear or whatever, and the timeline's gonna be screwed up. It doesn't need to all, you know, work out, uh, you know, perfectly, realistically, or whatever. Uh, up here. 
yeah, I don't know. It's just sort of, you know, everything like Majora's Mask and uh, Ocarina of Time and every other time travel thing. It's always like, oh, but you know, why does why does Link get to bring some items back, and not others? And you know, if he brings the item back in time, well, doesn't that mess it up? Because then it wouldn't be there in the previous time or whatever. if I should be buying this stuff. tabs uh, yeah I know you can I think those like carry over into new game plus or whatever so you can keep going through again and again and then uh, you know boost everyone's stats up to max or whatever uh, is this it oh I it's save I guess I guess it's just in the overworld. Yeah, actually, I remember uh, the guy in like middle school, one of my friends, who first got me into emulators. Uh, you know, I, re I remember him bringing over, like, he biked over to my house and brought like a US, or not a USB stick, I don't remember what it, maybe a CD he had burned or something, uh, with like uh, Z SNES and. Uh, it had like, I don't know, Paranigma, uh, Bam at Lagoon with some like weird translation of it. Uh, what else? Uh, there was Chrono Trigger, uh, Ogre Battle. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of those really, I don't know, obscure JRPGs and stuff that, uh, you know, you couldn't play at the time because they were super rare or not even available in English. And he just like brought them all over and was like, look, you can look at all these games you can play uh, on your computer and uh, I think he gave me some like really garbage controller he had like it was a I don't think it was USB it was like a serial controller or something but it was shaped like a SNES controller uh, where did I go? Uh, right, it's not in there um Bridges south, I can't get there. Uh, it's probably not in the residence anywhere. I guess we just head back up the mountain. Get past everyone. Yeah, so we get, he gave me this really like garbage controller that uh, he didn't even want anymore, and uh, uh, it like barely worked. Like the D-pad was just horrible, and uh... okay. It had like some turbo buttons on it or something that were really flaky and sometimes they would just, you know, trigger or whatever or you'd turn them on and they wouldn't work. Uh, the thing was just horrible, but I ended up playing so much, uh, you know, Z-SNES with that. Uh, but anyways, he was, he was obsessed with Chrono Trigger. Uh, I remember him always talking about, oh, he was going through again and again, and uh, he was, you know, boosting everybody up with the tabs to max stats, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, he was, he was totally obsessed with it. Uh, okay, um... I didn't miss something. Oh, 
but this is like her uh, ancestors or whatever. That guy, he was, uh, I guess he was a good guy. He gave me uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, games and emulators and stuff. Uh, but he was weird as hell. Oh. Airpin. Uh-oh. Top nine would be uh, anodyne. Right, anodyne's one I I bought it years ago, uh, back when it first came out. Uh, but for some reason I never played it. Uh, and then I think I was I don't know I was looking for a Metroidvania or something to play, and oh, here's anodyne. So. I played through it. I think I played it on Switch. Um, yeah, I think I was like uh, visiting a relative or something for a couple days, and uh, I had my Switch with me, so but, yeah, I'll play Anodyne. Uh, it was really good. Um, yeah, it's kind of Zelda-like. Uh, it's a very... Frog. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't remember any of this. So yeah, Anodyne, it was a very, I don't know, it's a good Zelda-like kind of game. Uh, very open, you can really kind of just go wherever you want in it. Um, and it's got a very cool post-game thing that I won't spoil, but... Uh, if you're into, you know, messing around post-game and being able to, you know, find all sorts of hidden stuff, uh, It's, uh, it would be, you know, highly recommended. Uh, I don't typically do that. I like usually just, you know, I go through, beat the game, and then unless I really absolutely love the game, uh, then it's okay, I'm done, I'm moving on to something else now. So I, I didn't do too much of it, but, uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is really cool. Uh, I did play it much earlier in the year, so I'm kind of having a hard time remembering a ton of stuff about it, but it, I do remember it was very good. Right, uh... I don't heal. I don't... maybe I should have bought some more healing stuff.
funny. Um, they are fake, I guess. Yeah. Again, wasn't actually a bad game. Uh, it's on the Switch eShop. Uh, I don't know if it's on PC or anything. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like a PS1 or 2 era like Sega game. Or I guess like a Dreamcast game. Uh, and like, I don't know, Sonic Adventure or something. Uh, it's a, yeah, very kind of simple, I don't know, 3D platformer. Uh, like, it is, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and it's, I don't know, you can beat it in just a couple hours. So uh, I would recommend it to anybody who likes that kind of style. Like, it, it looks very Sega. Uh, like, you know, it looks just like, I don't know, Monkey Ball or uh, Nights into Dreams or whatever. The platforming is very kind of like simple and janky, but uh, it's not like difficult or frustrating at least. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, I don't I would recommend it. I think it's like it's like a dollar or something. So uh, it's just you know it's nothing amazing or whatever, and there's a good chance you'll uh, you'll you'll just be like okay, this is garbage or whatever, but uh, I know it's worth a shot anyways. Uh... Yeah, I don't have too much else to say about it, because, you know, there's not much a pretty small short game. Uh, I guess number top eight would be uh, like the eighth best would be uh, Rabbi Ruby. Uh, I played this on Steam, I believe, but uh, I think it is available on Switch as well. Uh, this is very similar to Hollow Knight. I think that would be the closest I can think of. Uh, it's a fairly open-ended uh, Metroidvania. Yeah, it's a very open-ended Metroidvania, and there's a bunch of cool uh, 
like for instance you get uh there's a, a wall jump ability and like a double jump ability and stuff but there is a kind of like secret wall jump ability you can do uh you know with certain button inputs uh and you can do that like right from the start and then there's a couple other kind of similar like movement techs you can do uh and these let you like get into places early and like sequence break so you can do the whole thing like very open-ended So it's it's structured very similar to Hollow Knight, where it's kind of you know it's a action heavy uh, Metroidvania, and you there's kind of like a goal of you know what you got to do eventually, but it doesn't really railroad you that much. Uh, it is a, maybe a bit more linear than Hollow Knight. There's a fair amount of like talking and cutscenes and stuff, but I I just skip that. I don't even know what the story is about because I wanted to play Metroidvania, not read a book. Uh, yeah, there is there is quite a bit of talking, but you can always just skip it, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, you just you go all around, uh, know, just exploring, going where you want. Um, it does have a map, so you don't have it does yeah it does have a map, but uh, the map doesn't show you like all the places where like you need to use some new power up. So it's still very much worth uh, at least keeping notes, you know, like, uh, you know, once I get triple or double jump or whatever, go back to the room left of the save point in this area or whatever. Uh, just notes like that are important to keep, uh, otherwise you end up just going through the whole map over and over again every time you get a new power up. But yeah, it's, it was a really good game. Uh, I don't know, the art style is very, like, you know, Japanese, indie, kind of anime style. Uh, all the characters are, like, very, like, moe, funny girl, uh, you know, type characters. So, I don't know, some people may not care for that. Uh, but uh, I thought it was pretty good. Attacks. Uh, looks like uh, Luca and Frog can kill an enemy if they both attack it without much wasted uh, overkill. Okay, or not. I don't know, the, the damage people will do seems to be very variable. Like, they'll do like 20 damage or 50 damage. Yeah, like she did 10 to the other character, the other enemy, and then she did like uh, 50 to that one, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I should be healing or something. For some reason, I'm getting the feeling that I've, like, game over here before. Uh... I do really like that there's no random encounters. Like, you can... Even if it is annoying that it's like, okay, I want to go in this room and there's an enemy and I'm gonna have to fight them. Uh, it's so much better than just, you know, 
random encounters just happening while you're walking around. You know, it means you can you can beat an enemy and then go back and forth and kind of look around, and you're not like uh, you know dreading getting more encounters. Uh, like most RPGs, that's it. It really kills the incentive to explore because it's like, okay, I can go down this hallway, but I'm pretty sure the way I'm supposed to go is over here. Uh, and if I go down that hallway and it's a dead end, I'm gonna fight a bunch of enemies on the way there. I'm gonna fight a bunch of enemies on the way back, and I'm not gonna gain anything. So, like, is it worth all my time to, you know, you know, spend 20 minutes doing random encounters just to go down this hallway? I really hope one of these guys gets a, a healing spell, although I think uh, Marl is kind of the dedicated healer, so uh, I don't know if these guys will. Minecraft. Uh, I've never, until now, I've never really played Minecraft. Uh, I did play it a little bit. Uh, place I used to live, the landlord's son had Minecraft, and for a while, like until he got Fortnite and you know, obsessed with it, he was obsessed with Minecraft. Uh, and so sometimes, you know, if I was uh, babysitting or whatever, I'd kind of get roped into playing that a bit, but that was always just a uh, creative mode, uh, usually just kind of helping him with his big construction projects, like, uh, uh, okay, you know, he'd be like, okay, we're, we need to make a big tower here, so place, you know, just make a giant tower out of these blocks or whatever, and I'd just, you know, kind of go along with him and do that. Uh, Right, no entry. Okay. I, I I thought there was something there. Uh, but I'd never actually played through like Minecraft survival mode or anything. Uh, but it always looked kind of interesting. Uh, I like the idea of you know just. The survival, you know, here's a big world, it's randomly generated, you can explore, you can do whatever you want. Uh, that was very appealing. Uh, and that's kind of the reason why I ended up playing it. Uh, but I did end up getting somewhat disappointed. I found there was a lot of... it's very grindy. Um, it... Yeah, a lot of it, it kind of had the feeling of like what I was talking about before, about like the cookie clicker games. A lot of it did feel very like I wasn't actually doing anything interesting. I was simply, uh, you know, tapping buttons to get stronger or whatever. Uh, like the... Yeah, the, like the mining... Well, yeah, the mining and the, the crafting, annoyingly enough, were both... They fit into that perfectly. It was, uh, you know, mining isn't really... It's not really, like, thought-intensive or anything. You just go, okay, there's there's a wall there full of uh, whatever mineral I need, and so I'm going to spend 20 minutes tapping the A button and moving forward in order to mine it. And, uh... You know, enemies don't really affect you that much when you're mining. It's pretty easy to just, even if there are enemies around, it's pretty easy to just, you know, you dig a little trench or whatever away from them and then, uh, you know, throw up a wall behind you and then they can't get you. They're not gonna, 
uh, dig through and get you or anything, so they're not really a concern. And, uh, you know, food isn't really a concern. You don't need to worry about being super efficient or anything. Uh, you know, the the day-night cycle, most of your mining takes place underground, so it, it doesn't really have any effect. Mining is just, you know, you put down some torches and you sit there and you hit the A button over and over for half an hour until you mined everything. And it was just, I don't know, it was just super dull. If there was, like, I don't know, I think it would be greatly improved by just, you know, instant mining. You just, uh, you point your button at some, you point at something, hit A, and you, you instantly mine the block. Because there's not any value in it anyways. Uh, I should go, I'm gonna go save, just in case. I have a feeling there's a boss or something coming up. So yeah, like, I found the mining to be just incredibly dull. It was, uh, whenever I was mining, I was just sitting there thinking, like, this, this is a waste of my life. I'm, I'm sitting here tapping A in order to watch, like, the number of granite I have go up or whatever. And then the, the crafting also, I thought, was surprisingly bad for a game about crafting. Uh, there was just so many like like quality of life things that other games have that that aren't even about crafting that Minecraft doesn't have. At least in the, the base Switch game. I don't know if uh, PC game, uh, if, like the PC version. Oh yeah, I was playing it on Switch. Uh, mostly because I just didn't want to bother with any like, I just wanted it to run and it to work and not really worry about uh, any of that stuff, uh, you know, it not working or whatever, or, or getting lost in mods. I know that, you know, I have a tendency to, you know, if mods were available, I probably would have installed a whole bunch of mods and, you know, I'd, I'd go down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, not really playing Minecraft, but just screwing around with mods. So I wanted to just, you know, I wanted to just play Minecraft. Plus, you know, I thought, okay, if this does end up being good, like, I had thought, okay, maybe Minecraft is going to end up being, like, one of my favorite games of all time or something. Then I wanted to be able to just play it on Switch anytime. That's why, you know, I got the digital version, so, okay, I'll always have it with me. Uh... Okay, I thought maybe that killed them. Oh wait. 
Okay, good. Uh, that was 10 MP. I was very disappointed with the amount of healing there. Uh, if that was, uh... 10 HP. Okay, it's... Her thing doesn't show how much health he has. That's so annoying. That's... That's one of the things that I always hate about JRPGs, is they give you all these cool, like, abilities and stuff, you know, with buffs and debuffs and, uh, you know, seeing enemy HP and all this. And then they make it so that the bosses are immune to it all, but that's, like, the only time you would want to use it anyways. It's like, I don't really care how much HP the bog standard, uh, enemy has. You know, who I'm gonna kill in one shot anyways. Okay, this guy... He must be dead soon. Or I'm supposed to... I, I don't think they would have a you gotta lose it fight like this this early in the game. I don't know, should I have grinded up a few more levels or something? This is... I don't know, this is weird. I... This doesn't seem right. I'm betting this is a spot where at least one, at least once I died and then like went back to the beginning of the game or something. Because I didn't save. I I gotta stock up on healing items and stuff, and uh, maybe grind a bit. No, no, don't return to the castle. I see treasure chests. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a quick break so I can break the recording and check that hopefully it's all okay. Um, and then probably continue for another hour or so.